something that I wrote. So we're going to just kind of work through the chapters. But this chapter is about defining discipline. So uh, I'd like for you first, Coach, to be thinking about this. How do you find, define discipline for your program? I guarantee you the first thing you think about is your players and how they can become more disciplined. I'd like to challenge that thinking. And I'd like for you to think of it like this. How are you disciplined? Or does it start with you, Coach? Are you a disciplined coach that can then transfer to your team, maybe their personal habits, and then also transfer to the court? Because you know that I believe that there's only one brain. It's not the coach brain and the go home brain and the brain that you have on the weekend. There's one. So I want to challenge you, coach. Are you a disciplined human being? So if you go, well, I am. Okay. Well, tell me how you've rated your ability to be disciplined. So let's pick something really, really simple, like a simple exercise, like, I don't know, making your bed, okay, let's go there first. So if you take something in your life, you know, for the women on the call, it may be things like taking your makeup off at night before you go to bed. Um, guys, you'll have to pick yours. I'm not sure what, what that is in your world or not, but think of something, okay, that's really simple. It's not hard to do. It should be a routine behavior, okay? My definition of discipline is this. Discipline is your ability to do the same thing over and over again with no regard to your circumstance or environment. All right, so let's go through it. Uh, my discipline rating scale is about making my bed. So here I go. I wake up and it's um, a situation where I'm late. I'm running behind. I'm going to be late for my very first meeting. And all of a sudden I go, do I really want to make my bed? Can I make up the time somewhere else? Well, what I would tell you is that's a circumstance that you, that you woke up late. Does that change irrationally saying, I'm not going to make my bed today? So I'd ask you that first, Coach. The next thing is, you probably relate that to one of your players. So your player gets up. They're running a little bit behind already. They only have one class at 8 a.m. Then they have a big break. Well, what do they want to do? They want to go back and take a nap. So now all of a sudden they're going, well, that's an environment or that's a circumstance. So now I'm not going to make my bed. And they rationalize that. I would tell you that that's an undisciplined behavior. It is the small things that you're putting together to the big things. So I decided that I was going to work through this myself and I was going to pick some discipline habits. And here's the things that I learned with myself for the first three or four days. Pretty simple. It was a challenge I wanted to do. And coaches, we all want to be disciplined. So day five, day six, it started getting a little tougher each of those days. And so I decided I was going to rate these challenges and challenge myself for my discipline level so that I'd build more structure in my life. I call that habit stacking. So now it would feel weird to me not to get up. And the first thing I do is make the bed. It would just be just as weird as getting up and not brushing my teeth to get my day started. And so once you're able to do some of that habit stacking, you can become more disciplined. Discipline, in my mind, is a good word. It's not a bad word. It's not something that someone's doing negative to you. It's the ability to create more structure around your world and hopefully provide good habits for your team. So I would challenge you guys this week as you're getting ready for your weekend to pick something to rate it. So that, you know, we're all in the education business. So I decided I was going to rate mine A, B, C, D and maybe an F, depending upon the situation. Uh, and then I was able to improve on those things. So coach, I would ask you to challenge first, are you a disciplined human being before you start screaming and yelling at your kids to touch the line because they're undisciplined? So discipline to me and the structure of being able to rate myself became first in my thoughts. You become undisciplined first in the way that you think. After you think those thoughts, then the actions then start to produce itself. So I think the ability to say, you know what, I'm going to be disciplined in the way that I'm thinking. So when you're not thinking of an exit strategy, you're not thinking about an excuse. You're thinking about creating positive, small daily habits. If you can create small daily habits, you will have such a, a great foundation. And then the other thing I always like to ask myself around discipline, the things that I'm doing, if my players saw me do them, would they think, wow, coach is really disciplined. Or is coach just somebody who yells and screams about discipline? Coach, I'm going to talk right to you here. How many of us are not in the best shape that we need to be in? Well, I would argue that that is small habits. That's being disciplined. Discipline in healthy eating, di discipline in hydration, discipline in the amount of rest we get, the amount of exercise that we get. All right, so we've got these goals. 
we got to focus now because we have levels of discipline. And then I believe consistency is the truest measure of performance. So we want to go and do this thing every day. Goals, focus, consistency, now apply hard work to it. Now, I'm just telling you, that is a formula that is unmatched and it's undefeated. You take your goal, you take a focus, you add consistently behaviors through it, then you put some hard work on top of that, coach. I'm not sure that you even could have the ability to fail. I want to tell you a quick story about a kid on our team. So this kid was a, a shooter. I mean, she could really shoot the ball so, so well. But she was very undisciplined in her life. So her off-the-court decisions, her off-the-court choices that she made on the weekends, uh, it, it impacted her game. But she was such a talented kid. And so all the time, you know, we're screaming at her all the time. You've got to be more disciplined. You've got to get in the gym more. you got to make better choices. Well, all those things, coach, just kind of went over her head, over her head, over her head. It took multiple years. And finally, I, I really credit one of my former assistant coaches by taking her by the hand and saying, you know what? I'm going to start these things with you. So the healthy eating, the clean eating, the, the hydration perspective, the amount of time we're getting in the gym. So we had a belief that if you would add a, ha a positive habit in a kid's life, naturally a negative habit would go away. So let me explain that to you, what happened in this story. So this kiddo, whatever she would do on the weekends, all of a sudden, instead of going and doing that, she was in the gym getting those extra 500 shots. So by the time she got home, maybe she wasn't really feeling up to going out and doing some of the things that she had been doing before. Well, then all of a sudden, when you're talking about you're eating better, you're drinking a plenty of water, you're working out like crazy, your confidence is up because you're in the gym, you put in that work, she started seeing physical changes. So her confidence level was unbelievable. Then she started dropping weight. She ended up dropping a significant amount of weight where she became incredibly fit. So now you're talking about a player that God had already sprinkled all kinds of talent on top of her, right? Then she started learning how being disciplined and adding these little small habits is producing an unbelievable amount of results for her. And then what happened? She started doing it consistently. These things didn't happen in a week, coach. This is months and months. Then you put hard work on top of that. So now she's wanting to do extra. She's asking us to come in and do extra. Take the talent, apply some discipline, hard work incorporated in that. And I'm telling you, it is un defeated. So I have a challenge for each of you. Uh, it's the two feet in for 22. So what I'm asking you to do is take something that's going on in your life, create a positive habit. Okay. Maybe that is removing a negative habit. You know what? I'm just not going to drink as much soda this week. I promise you when you remove that soda, a positive habit's coming in. Maybe that habit is water, right? But it's not going to be soda or more caffeine. Take something negative away and do it consistently for 22 days and watch what happens with some uh, habit stacking on top of each other. So coach, again, my definition of discipline, discipline is the ability to do the same thing over and over again with no regard to your circumstance or your environment. So the next time one of your kids gives you the reason like, coach, I, I don't know why I missed that free throw box out, right? Or gives you the excuse of, oh, I, I was fatigued when I missed it. Understand that that's a circumstance, that's an environment, and that is not a consistent behavior, so that's undisciplined. And no player, no coach, no one that I know in the country wants to be described as undisciplined. So let's make sure we understand, coach, that discipline starts first with us. That's where it starts first, how we live our lives every single day, not just at the office, not just at the gym, but at home. Yes, first, coach, it's about discipline with us. Then you can instill those positive behaviors with your team and with your staff and remembering that it starts with how you're thinking. Are you thinking of an excuse not to get things done? Or are you understanding that you are the example? You are the example in the gym with those kids. So I challenge each of us to be more disciplined coaches so that we can influence and impact kids better every single day. Adam, let's open it up. If anybody's got any questions or anything I can talk about relative to discipline. I'll start you off, coach. So obviously at the junior college level, you're dealing with 18 and 19 year olds. How are you, is discipline something you're looking to identify in the recruiting process? Or how are you looking to instill that in, in, in your players? 
at the junior college level, I'm not looking for it at the in the recruiting. At the Division One level, absolutely, it's readiness. I think that my job as a junior college coach right now is to get kids prepared. So when there is a kid that lacks discipline, I love to have them come in our program because I think that gives me somewhere a year to two years to instill some of those behaviors. We know that if those if those behaviors are instilled at a younger age, it's much, much more simple, right, for us. But when they're not and we get them, but you have the talent and we can put the discipline to it, then I think I have the ability to get players to the four-year level and they're going to stick. They're going to do better. Now, I obviously think it's structure, but it also has to be about understanding. It can't just be, well, this is what I have to go do. You have to get them incorporating some of these discipline challenges. Like I'm talking about, we have to do ourselves. I'll talk right away about the making the bed example or for our players taking their makeup off at night, every single night. For women, that's a big thing. We get tired. We get in late. The last thing you want to do is take your makeup off. I know, guys, you're not relating to that, but ask your wife. She'll tell you that's the truth. And so just some of those simple behaviors, uh, that if we can get them leading a more disciplined life off the court, there's no question that that's going to transfer on the court. So when you look at it, the easiest example is in sprinting and, and kids not hitting the lines. There's not one kid in our program that would, would not touch the line. I'm just going to tell you, they understand that for me, it's not about touching the line. For me, it's about a level of discipline. And I think that a kid can't do simple things like make your bed or touch the line. There is no way in the world that the final possession of the game that they're going to hit the box out and secure the rebound for your team to win. No way. So if, if, if coaches, this is year 20. I said that to somebody the other day, year 20 of me coaching. And I had to learn this the hard way. And we lost a lot of games because of it. If You have an undisciplined kid on your team. That's really talented. And you're in the final possession of the game. Take them out because they are undoubtedly going to be the one that doesn't go set the screen or doesn't hit the box out, it ends up costing you the basketball game. Heather, how do you balance trying to keep like a good flow and momentum and, and like, you know, positivity with your team and balance that with like setting the standard and know like we have to do this right every single time? You know, I, I, I think that I have a good balance now because I think you've got to take the words discipline and accountability and hard work and in your program, don't allow those things to be dirty words. Allow those things to go, no, that's exactly what I want. I want someone to hold me accountable. We have five affirmations uh, within our blueprint is what we call it. And it is, um, it's our culture basically is the easy way to do it. So it's five affirmations. And one of them is I'll challenge you. And I'll hold you accountable. And so when you start talking about that, these are affirmations that the players understand that every single day you want coaches to hold you accountable. You want player to player holding each other accountable. Another one of them is I won't let you down. All right. So look at this. If you know that in your culture of your program, and these are affirmations, five affirmations that we do, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to believe in you. I'm not going to let you down. Think through those kinds of things. When you look at it in a holistic perspective, isn't that really what kids want anyway? You know, and they're going, man, the reason that I'm running that sprint, if the reason they're running the sprint is because of themselves, then they're not going to run the sprint that hard. And they're not going to run the sprint with any sort of, of passion about why they're doing it. If they're running that sprint past the point that they're going, I just don't physically feel like I can run one more sprint. They're running it because they don't want to let the teammate down or they don't wanna let the coach down, when you can get your eyes off yourself and allow it to be about the other people in the room or allow it to be about the program, then you can take words like demanding and hardworking, right? Or discipline or accountability, and you can see it for what it is. It's to reach goals, guys. I mean, that's how we became coaches because we understand about goal setting and we understood about accountability and we understood that the things that we learned as athletes are invaluable to be successful in life. And so that's where our passion became and why we chose to become coaches. So you can't make it all about discipline is bad. You have to make it discipline equals goals, discipline equals achieving. And I think that we've been able to find a nice balance in our program uh, to as we now, you know, every time I define toughness, toughness is your ability not to rationalize. 
discipline, the ability to do the same thing over and over again with no regard to your circumstance or environment. Those are our definitions of it. So I think if you're just using the words and not defining it for your team, you're making a mistake. Because if you don't define it, I guarantee every coach on the call, if I said, hey, what's discipline for you guys? It would all, all be just different definitions. So we've defined it so we can identify it so that we can point it out and so that we can hold players accountable for it. Heather, we have a question in the chat from Brian Bender. Uh, he's asking if you would repeat your whole five affirmations. Like what are they? <laughs> let, me go, let me go slow. That's why I like to use um, the dry erase board so I can have it all written down. And Adam, I think you can throw that up too if we wanna talk about some of the discipline for everybody. So the five affirmations are this. Um, I will not let you down. I will hold you accountable. I will believe in you. I will care about you. And if I told you the last one, did I say I would challenge you? Brian, did I get a chat would challenge you? I think that, yeah, that was a first I'll shoot one. it over to you. But, uh, but those are the five. And, and as we go through that, let's talk about the blueprint a little bit. So if those are affirmations of what we're going to do for each other every single day, we also have um, a passion statement, which is a little bit different than a vision statement. The passion statement is how you define your team relative to so that they don't quit. Okay. And so that's what as coaches, you've got to decide what is your passion statement when it is your passion, then you won't quit on something when it's just a vision. Sometimes when it gets really hard, it's much, much easier to walk away and quit. And I think you guys have heard me say this before, but my definition of success is just keep showing up because the majority of people, when it gets really, really hard, they bail out and they already quit on you. So uh, other elements of our blueprint, and Adam, I'd be glad to send this to you so you can, everybody can see it. It's really how we put on paper, you know, what our, what our core values are and what our vision statement is. And then some of these definitions as well, we've included on it. But, uh, you know, we've got 10 core values. And every single time our team gets derailed or I think is, is going in the wrong direction, I pull out the blueprint right away and I remind them, you know, one of our core values, and I coach women, is we're going to be aggressive and unapologetic about it. One of the few times that women have the permission to do that is in a sports arena, and teaching them how to have these strong opinions and stand up for what they believe in is so important. So uh, anyway, some of those kinds of things are part of the core values. The other one I like to talk about really quickly is being competitive, you know, because um, a lot of times you look at it and you go, all right, so is, co is competitive, like we're talking about discipline and toughness, is that a dirty word? Absolutely not. Competitive is, is how we want to be, always in all ways. So we want to be competitive in drills. Uh, we want to be competitive off the court. We want to be competitive when they come up to the house and we're playing cards. You want to create that same environment everywhere. So just like you want discipline, you want structure, you also want a competitive environment. Um, and we do that within our drills. Uh, obviously, in a practice environment, I think if you want the kids to um, winning and losing is important in game day, it also has to be important in an environment, uh, in a practice environment. Heather, you got a question uh, from Justin. Justin, I know you typed it in, but I'm going to let you go ahead and unmute yourself and ask it. Hey, Heather. Uh, hey. So I asked, are you starting your season or preseason for that matter, telling your players about your expectations of discipline? A positive and negative or are you letting them learn along the way through trial and error no I am very much on the front end okay so I and that may be a little bit different in how I have recruited is I want to make sure that everyone has seen this blueprint before they sign up because what I have learned through the course of time from coaches to players this is our blueprint and we're not changing it for a good player we're not changing it for a good coach. This is how we're going to do stuff. And this is the structure. So I want everybody when they sign up to sign up and go, this is what I signed up for. I'm excited about this. And the parents really buy into it because they get that these are life lessons that these guys are taking with them forever, which I think has been just so important for us. So no, we're doing everything on the front end, including from the starting with recruiting and then um, we'll implement it. So uh, there's different ways of implementation. The first is I want everyone to be able to define what we're doing. So they're going to say our 10 core values and our affirmations, and we're going to go through it. 
then we have to teach them how to apply it. So as we kind of go through the year, things will happen and I'll right away point it, point it into that. And I'll go, when she said that to you, she's just holding you accountable. And that's one of our affirmations of what we want from each other. Or maybe I've really got on them really hard that day. And I go, hey, th that's what you said. You wanted a coach that was gonna challenge you. I'm challenging you. Uh, one year we even had t-shirts. The front of the t-shirt said, I will care about you. And the back of the t-shirt said, I will challenge you. And we wore those every single day at practice and I thought that was a really good reminder for our staff and also our team. Can you challenge them? And can they also walk away and know with how much we care about them? Uh, Heather, you got a question from Russ. Heather, how are you? Hey, Russ, what's up? Hey, quick question for you. How much of uh, discipline do you think starts with a uh, consistent schedule? Um, having, a, ha having a routine, um, Cause I, I just know for myself, like if I, if I can't sleep in, but if I do sleep past six fifteen six thirty I feel so rushed for the rest of my day. Like Sunday morning church starts at 9.00 AM. And, and right now we're watching online. Well, if I'm not up by six and I'm not out the door by six fifteen taking the dogs on the walk, now I just feel rushed. And then that's how I feel for the rest of my day. You know, so how much of discipline do you think starts with routine and, and, and having a set schedule? I think it is routine, but as we know with coaches, sometimes things come up and we have to be off our routine. Um, I think understanding what your trigger points are gonna be, like you've already quickly identified like self-awareness is that if you aren't up early, kind of getting a head start on the day, you're playing from behind, then maybe you're not at your best. And so the identification of self-awareness in that piece I think is really important. I think uh, the coaches who can't understand what their pieces are and keep into that structure, maybe uh, don't maximize their days. I mean, relative to a kid comes in, wants to have a conversation. You feel like you've already been playing for behind. You don't have time to have that conversation. That ends up being the biggest conversation you could have had during the day. So I think understanding what our, our trigger points are uh, and then putting that structure or that discipline around them. So for you, it's getting up in the morning. For me, it's one hour prior to practice. I'm not on email. I'm not on text message. I'm not messing on social media. I'm narrowed in, I'm focused. Because I have uh, to understand, regardless of the distractions through my day, the most important thing I do for our team to be successful is me coming in and having a great practice. And I put a lot of pressure on myself is that every day, the energy that I bring has to be consistent. I cannot come in. If this is who I am, I've got to be this every single time. Uh, regardless if who I am is a little lower than this or a little higher than this, I, I, the kids deserve that of me, even if I've had a bad day or even if I've had a good day, because again, my definition of consistency is the truest measure of performance. Anybody can have a good day. Anybody can have a good week. Hell, some people have a good month. It's important that you're consistent every single day. Then you can put success on top of one another. So I think I answered your question with that. What about the flip side? not from the coaching aspect, but from, from the players aspect, like, you know, my sister's a, a high school principal and, and I, I see so much kids that go home and their home life is a mess and they're, they're out of their routine and all that stuff. They don't get as much stuff done. So, so how can we as coaches get our players to be more disciplined by helping them get into a routine? I think parameters within their life, right? So you're, you've got to be the first one that can help them if they can't identify that they're going home and not getting their homework done. Um, if you're able to say, hey, let's talk through this. You're always coming in and you're behind and now you're turning in work late. And now we're getting, you know, 10 points off of the, of the assignment. Now you're making C's when you really could make some B's. Putting that structure and that discipline in their life. Maybe they're coming in early for early morning breakfast and doing some study hall, or maybe they're staying a little bit later and they're handling that. Because we obviously know that everyone's home situation is different, uh, but being able to have these authentic relationships where the kid trusts you enough to share about what's going on at home, um, and then you're, the parents trusting you enough that you're looking out for their kid and putting these structures that are appropriately in place. Now, at the college level, a little different, right? We've got them, and so for me, it, comes more about the weekend behavior because Monday through Friday, you can pretty much structure what they're doing, when they're going to study halls, when they're eating, when they're practicing, when they're in classes. The weekend, I think, is when it gets a little bit off, meaning 
they want to sleep all day Saturday, go out and party, sleep all day Sunday. And then all of a sudden it's like, uh, how am I going to get ready for my week? So when you're able to, maybe it's some community service on a Saturday, uh, maybe you're doing some youth clinics and things on Saturdays or some community work, the ability to go, hey, you know what, we've got a, a volleyball game or a baseball game or something. Let's go out here and everybody meet. Or maybe it's just one or two kids that you just know needs a little bit of extra time and you can meet them out for something positive. Uh, and then I love gathering them on a Sunday night. And I think this has worked really well, especially uh, when the kids lack the structure and you go, okay, we're going to sit down and let's plan our week. We, we have literally created a grid where players can map out when they go, I don't have time. I don't have time to study for this. I don't have time to come get extra shot or I don't have these times where we can map it out. And we go, okay, let's block in when you're going to eat, when you're going to watch TV, when you're going to go to class, when you've got practice, when you're going to get on social media, block it out. And when you do that, literally on a sheet of paper, then the kids are going, I guess I have more time in the day than I did. I realized because they're, they're losing a lot of time messing around on social media. And that allows them to stay disciplined and maybe even balance what they have going on academically. If they've got three tests that week, when they're going to study for what test, it just helps them map it out because not everyone can see things um, in, in a forward perspective. You know, a lot of people you know, are drinking out of a fire hose and it's just like, I just need to get to that next hour. And so I think as coaches for us to be able to open up their vision a little bit of going, I'm gonna put some structure around this to help you. And so they can see it as, wow, coach is really helping me maximize the day, not coaches controlling what I'm doing and I've got no free time. It's just about, again, just creating some small habits. And, and we incorporated this year, Russ, that I thought was really good some shooting structures with our team. And so I think uh, a lot of players go, I, I just, by the time I get out of practice and weights and study hall, and I don't have time to get any shots up. So here's how we did it. We said, okay, you're going to get these 1600 shots. And th the folks that accomplish it, they do half of the amount of any sort of conditioning we do in practice. Okay. So let's say that I say, we lo you lost that drill. We're going to get on the line. You're going to run two down and backs that kid would only have to run the one down and back versus the two, okay? So the reward system, when they do things well, helps big time, right? So all of a sudden, they're like, we're planning out their week on this grid. And they're like, hey, better add me some shot time. I need to get on the shooting machine to be able to do that at this time. So the positive reinforcement, the other uh, positive reinforcement we have is uh, we have what we call sprint passes. So when I see things that the kids are doing really well, so maybe they're working on some discipline habits, then I'll come in and I'll give out sprint passes. And those passes, I'll just say, hey, we had a, we had a, a kid have an A on so-and-so, or we had so-and-so get 2,000 shots. I'm giving them sprint passes, uh, which is a huge reward, obviously, a kid not to have to run a couple extra sprints, especially the way that we play uh, for them. So I think the positive reinforcement uh, is key. Uh, so that they're making sure they see that carrot driver out in front of them. Uh, we had a hand up, it went down though. Matt Dickman, did you have a question or no? I think Matt maybe ran. Yeah, I did. I really don't know how to phrase it. I guess I'll try. So if you have, so like discipline, you said it starts at the top and I completely 100% agree. Um, but it's almost expected. So it doesn't like really, it's not seen. It, you almost don't realize discipline from like your leaders, or your coaches until it's not there. If that makes sense. Like you almost expect to be, if you expect, uh, you tell your players to be at the gym 15 minutes early, then they expect you to be there 15 minutes before you expect it, before they're there, you know? So, so that's kind of thing. And I'm trying to think about like other than being on time all the time in those situations, what are ways where, um, for instance, if my boss is away, he's not in the office and guys come by the office, I make sure to, hey, he's in a community meeting or he's out recruiting um, to let them know that he's not just not there, but what if I'm not there? And they come to the office and nobody's there. Uh, so those types of things. Matt, I, I've seen coaches um, become so sloppy in their behavior. And really, I think a lot of times they don't even realize that they're doing it, but they're screaming and yelling discipline. And then they pull their cars up to the side of the building in a no parking area. 
I'm going to argue that that's lack of discipline. You know, I'm going to argue that that behavior, if every single one of your kids parked in the no parking zone, you've got, <laughs> you've got a problem and you're going to get calls in the building, but here your head coach thinks they can come and park in a, in a no parking zone. Um, well, let's, let's think through it. So your staff comes to practice and uh, simple things, you know, they're not matching. They've got a short and a t-shirt on. They're not matching and no, no shirts not tucked in. And every single day they come in, they've, they've not shaved or maybe they look like they haven't taken a bath. I know that sounds silly, but I think you're projecting to those kiddos uh, the wrong image. I think every single day when you show up, you should show up, you should look the part and you should be prepared as a coach. I think as coaches, we're role models. And that's where I keep going. I think the longer that we're at a place, you know, the bad habits start to really, really come in. And so as a coach, do you have somebody holding you accountable? You know, I've told this story before, you know, Adam, that I gained a lot of weight and no one said, Heather, you're fat. And I'm going, why did someone tell me? I didn't know it was happening because I think you can get into a bad rut and things are happening really before you realize it's happening. So as a coach, do you have people in your kitchen cabinet and around you that can tell you the truth? And are you giving them permission to say, hey, if you see me off track, man, come right back and center me in because I want to be as good as I can be. And again, if you're only being as good as you can be, so you get the next big job, then the motive is wrong. You've got to be doing it as good as you can possibly do in it because you want to live longer for your family or you want to be the best coach for your kids so they have the best experience and you give them the best shot of winning because we're going to do this for years and years and years. They get four, maybe five, right, to do it. So you want that four to five years to be the most, the maximizing of their experience that they could possibly have. Adam, can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Uh, hey, Coach Heather. Hey there. Um, uh, my question, I guess, um, whenever players, you know, sometimes we have um, we have culture, you know, we uh, explain them when we get them, you know, and then they come, and then some individuals who is not rejected, they just so not used to it, you know, and it's like almost feel like you're hitting a wall with them every day, you know. But you can't just give up on them, you know, because um, you want what's the best, you know. And I guess my question, what do uh, you use to crack that shell, you know? Yeah. Does that makes sense? You know, I think that there's a fine line in the, the players that you have who are, who are buying into what you're doing and the amount of players who are not just not buying in, but actually hurting what you're doing. Maybe it's what they're saying to the other kids. Uh, or what they're saying in the locker room. And anytime you have um, a locker room lawyer, you got a problem. So if they're in there, they're undermining the things that you're saying and that you're doing. And so a lot of times uh, it's, it's key of your leadership on your team, the buy-in, not just for you as the head coach, but the buy-in from your entire staff, the buy-in from your leaders of your team. And then as you're recruiting, and maybe you've brought in someone that's taken a little bit longer to come along, I think that's positive peer pressure and the players can help the other ones come along with it. So, you know, I mean, it's as simple as you have a kid who thinks that, that they don't have to wear the same t-shirt on road trips than everyone else. And coach, as soon as you look away from it, you're losing. You have to confront anything that challenges your culture or challenges, you know, what your standards are. And I, and I have this theme. And so if we show up to the gym and somebody's got the wrong thing on and we're getting ready to go on a road trip, I will say to them, can't start winning until you stop losing. So if you want to go and win tonight, then you have to understand that you have to remove losing habits. And losing habits are as simple as you can't wear the exact shirt that you're supposed to wear on the road trip. Then I have a hard time believing that they're going to sprint that lane line as hard as they have to sprint it to execute during the middle of the game. So I think, I think that's been a key phrase. You can't start winning until you stop losing. So let's just make sure that we've got everybody moving in the same direction. And then coach, the best thing I would tell you, if the staff's on board and you've got your leadership as far as your players, they're on board and you have kind of an outlier, you're gonna have to have a really strong uh, conversation. I like to say, you're gonna have to conform. You're gonna have to conform to these standards to stay here. And you're, to play here, you're gonna have to believe in these things. To stay, you gotta conform. 
but to play, you got to believe in them. And you know what? Sometimes you got to make a tough decision as a coach. Sometimes you've got to do that. But if you're willing to do it, it could be for the betterment of your entire program. I've seen it a hundred times. You go through it, you fight and you're fighting, you're fighting with somebody and a kid decides, forget it, I don't want to do it. And they quit and they're a really good player. And then your team wins 10 in a row. We've seen it, coach. I'm just telling you, sometimes you just got to have the courage to a kid that doesn't want to be a part of what you're doing, wish them well, but let them walk away. Thank God. Any other questions for Heather before we let her go today? Listen, Adam, thanks again um, for the forum. I appreciate it. I love everything that you're doing with Rising Coaches. And glad to be a small part of it. Remember, discipline is the ability to do the same thing over and over again with no regard to your circumstance or environment. Define discipline for your team and then live it first with you, coach, and then you'll be able to have it with your team and with your program. Two feet in always, Adam. Thanks. Thanks, Heather.